Hi guys, welcome to another video. What I want to do in this video is just react to The Moon. Now he's broken down the movie The Matrix. Uh, the Moon is a big YouTuber in America. Uh, very, very talented YouTuber. I think The Moon's videos are very interesting. So uh, without further ado, let's sit down and let's talk about this specific breakdown to The Matrix. The Matrix is one of the greatest films ever made. It Green. did $460 million in just box office sales Damn. alone, and The Matrix was an instant hit. And after two decades, its relevancy continues I wouldn't say an instant hit, but I would say it was from the movies, pretty good. The Matrix and the Red Pool becoming widely adopted in modern culture. And yet even more interestingly, is that The Matrix is perhaps one of the most beautifully prophetic and meaningful wow. movies ever created in history. Seen. So what is it about this film that made it so culturally important? How could this movie continue to be so relevant after 20 20 years. What was the movie? I mean, because we're living in the Matrix right now. That's why it's so relevant to our times. Happy into. Well, this brings us on to the bedroom of a depressed, pasty software engineer, a nighttime hacker called Neo, who is slumped. I know a lot of software engineers right now. In his trash filled room, with the bleak film coloring resembling his nihilistic, empty, dull existence that Neo lives in. At the start of the Matrix, Neo is a nihilistic man. His corporate life, a monotonous desk job, makes Neo feel that his actions don't have any effect on reality. Small details in the film make this even clearer, with Neo's flat being numbered 101, a direct reference to George Orwell's book 1984. Hmm. In Orwell's book, Room 101 was a torture room where people- uh, I've heard a lot about the George Orwell's book 1984, but I haven't read it. I, I think a lot of people have said it's very good. So when I get the time, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to read it, and I'm also going to do a review of it would be shown their greatest fears in order to mold them in the state's ideal image. Bro, and that's Neo's scary. Life is lived inside room 101, where he is tortured by the routine and can't find any meaning in his life. So he seeks to find these answers through his double life as a hacker, but comes up empty every time. Whatever he does while locked inside the matrix has no meaning. But one day this starts to change when he wakes up to find a strange message on his monitor, with the message telling him that the quote matrix has him and that he must follow the white rabbit. It seems as though this could just be another hacker getting the white rabbit kind of sounds like one of those uh, gangs. You gotta join the white rabbits. Back in Neo, this could all just be a prank. But then the last thing the computer writes. I mean, is it could be Neo. Just before somebody does exactly that on his door, and when Neo opens the door, he finds it's a group of people led by a man who wants to buy illicit information held on a storage device. Neo that lets out hot. a sigh of relief. This is business as usual. But that girl is hot. Usual. But after the purchase is complete, the group Ooh. invites him out to the club, and right as he's about to refuse, Neo sees a white rabbit tattoo on the shoulder of one of the women. Realizing that this tattoo is part of the instructions sent by him on the computer, he accepts the invitation. Of course, follow the white rabbit. Something is up. The decision to follow the white rabbit is the first of many decisions in Neo's rejection of the Matrix, but he doesn't quite know this yet. And so, when arriving at the club, Neo is approached by a woman named. It's so scary being in a prison, um, like the Matrix. You have no control and i'm starting to notice like there are a lot of people which are talking about this right now like sneeko and and other youtubers you know uh even uh, andrew tate talks a lot about escaping the matrix and that's the truth whatever you whatever you're doing right now you should try to escape because there are people out there with a lot of power you can shape your future by a woman named Trinity, who cryptically warns him of impending danger. Neo recognizes her name as a fellow computer hacker. However, she says that was all a long time ago. Trinity then talks to Neo about his general dissatisfaction. So Trinity is pretty hard. She knows that Neo is aimless and tormented by a lack of meaning in his life. She knows that nihilism has nihilism. sucked his soul. So she promises him hmm. that there will be an answer. Cut to the next scene, and we see Neo waking up. He's surrounded by and green. To get chewed out by his boss. But in the back of Neo's mind are questions. Was following the white rabbit just a dream? Who was Trinity. All while Neo continues his droney mm. hollowed out existence, living like mm. human cattle in an artificial box, just waiting to die, writing, trapped inside a spiritual cage with all That's the other crazy. Dreams. The crushing weight of his sterile existence makes Neo even more. Curious. Just talk about how good this guy's English is. My God. Curious about the White Rabbit. It's a glimpse of something different. And just as Neo continues to stay stuck behind his cubicle, he is then struck by a call from a man named Morpheus. They're coming for you, Neo, and I don't know. What they're trying to do. It's crazy. that the danger Trinity was telling Neo about is real and that Neo is being followed by agents. In a tense scene, Neo briefly evades some agents who have been Jesus. looking but Neo's mind is the only thing holding him back. And Neo is actually successful in escaping the agents. He's finally taking that call to adventure. He's choosing to take his life into his own hands. We just talk about how good of an actor Keanu Reeves is, man. This is the start of Neo breaking free from his cage. 
but then he comes up against his biggest challenge as more listen i can tell you one thing i remember that scene right and you know when he's supposed to jump onto this like ledge bra i'm literally afraid of heights i would never be able to do that so i understand why he stopped and then just went with the agents tells Neo to be honest any way he can escape the agents to walk across the ah ledge. shit his programmed mind it's just no it's because he's obstacle. afraid he of heights my guy or his abilities. Mm -hmm. he's been programmed to be comfortable he's never been near real danger so his strength his mind and ability is hampered causing him to refuse that call to adventure and by refusing the call this represents neo refusing to tackle his fear he knows he'll be successful if he overcomes his fear and yet his weak anxious mind mm -hmm. is his biggest failure his nihilism it's still high. That keeps him trapped in the matrix it's and so still high. neo fails to succeed resulting in him being escorted to an interrogation room at first neo believes that he's being prosecuted by regular government workers but when neo demands to be given his rights they seal his mouth shut as if it was done by magic they then employ Plant a mechanical tracking bug into his stomach, meaning that Jesus. Neo will now always be tracked in the Matrix. Yeah. He's an outlier, and outliers are the biggest threat to their society. Hey, you know the crazy part? That is almost like how, what they're doing with the with the phones today, because they can track everything. They can, you know, literally listen to what you're saying when you're talking. They can go through your messages. They can even switch switch on your camera. Just like that, Neo is back in his bed. Again, seeming like this was all just a dream. And yet somehow, Neo is immediately called again by Morpheus, who gets Trinity and some other crew members to pick him up. Before Neo meets Morpheus, Trinity removes the bug that is tracking him, proving to Neo that this wasn't a dream. That's disgusting. Here, Neo goes on to meet his mentor, Morpheus, who's living inside... Morpheus is maybe the most relevant or the most interesting character that we've seen in in 20 years at an abandoned building morpheus confirms all of neo's suspicions telling pick the red pill or the blue pill that is the that is like the most relevant thing right now you got the red pillars and then you got the the blue pillars man stay in the matrix or get out of it telling him that his whole life is a lie and that he was born a slave to the matrix <sighs> this was why he was so demasculated becoming just demasculated it was all by design. However, Morpheus then offers Neo a choice. The decision on whether to remain mm. blissfully ignorant or learn the true mm. nature of the Matrix. Similar mm. to our own reality, nobody can really be told Exactly, you just, you just feel it all around you, like you don't have control, you don't know really what's happening has to experience it and find out for themselves. So Morpheus then opens mm. up his palms, revealing the notorious red and blue pills in his separate hands. In his left hand lies guy. the blue pill, Neo's and ticket to blissful ignorance. If he takes this pill, Neo will simply wake back up in his bed, believing in the nihilistic system that has brainwashed him, going back to his lonely, miserable, atomized, atomized. existence, all while remaining oh ignorant to the true nature of the world. And on the other hand, sits the red pill. Taking this pill will grant Neo access to the Matrix, allowing him to see the the world for what it truly is, as nasty as it may be. This decision is the crucial point of Neo's story, and marks the first phase of Neo's hero's journey. The hero's journey is one of the oldest tales of mankind. It's a narrative structure that ranges from all kinds of stories, from Star Wars to the Bible. The term was coined by author Joseph Campbell. He describes this as being a deeply ingrained part of the human psyche that allows humans to push through walls and do the impossible in pursuit of meaning. In the real world, the hero's journey is our path towards self-improvement and overcoming our neuroticism, anxiety, fears, and laziness. Yeah, which is why right now I'm trying to make a video and I'm just trying to, you know, push myself when it comes to doing reactions and doing videos. Uh, I know like sometimes I come out with videos and I'm just like, putting something out and trying it's because i genuinely want to do this and i want to be a better youtuber but sometimes man that the shit is hard which is why right now we're seeing this whole new wave of self-improvement serving as a ah. counterbalance to the nihilism that's embedded so deeply in modern society but this isn't a modern thing in fact many forms of buddhism gave a similar path to enlightenment along with so many other mm. religions the hero's journey is a process that's been taken by all of mankind it's every step out of your comfort i'm telling you this guy has maybe like the best youtube videos on youtube right now they clear your mind and it's not so much but yesterday i was watching like a lot of like youtube shorts and everything they're good but some of those youtube shorts are just destroying one's brain and that brings you further towards truth it's every action that you take towards self-improvement mm. which brings you closer to unlocking meaning in your life and it's one of the key things that the matrix tries to show we see this clearly when neo takes the red pill and the world begins to melt around him as he soon wakes up in a nightmare situation upon opening his eyes in the real world neo almost drowns Ugh. trying to remove all the cables that are attached to him such a 
disgusting Once he movie sometimes. And takes a look around, Neo sees the true reality mm. of the world, a human I mean, this is going to happen. As the eye can see, this is going to happen. Identical pods attached to enormous constructs, all of them containing other humans being harvested. How do we know that we're not when in the matrix right now? When Neo has managed to escape his sedation, he is Ugh. quickly discarded and thrown down a trash chute towards a pit filled with water. Luckily, before drowning, Neo is picked up by the claw of a ship and is subsequently rehabilitated by Morpheus and his crew. When being operated on, Neo questions why his eyes hurt. Along with his extreme muscle atrophy, Morpheus explains the reason. Neo is in a full on yeah, breakdown because exactly. he has never Pain. actually experienced any kind of bodily autonomy. Once Neo is brought to stable condition, he is plugged into a chair and Bro, that shit is crazy. Morpheus because Morpheus needs to show Neo the true, the true reality, reality. Of the Matrix. At first, Neo is in disbelief that he's inside a computer program, but Morpheus questions him on if this is actually so hard to believe. I mean, it is. He explains that if what you can feel, smell, taste, and see, then what constitutes as real is simply electric signal is being interpreted by your brain. After this explanation, Morpheus reveals that the outside world is it's a scary thought. That's a scary thought that you can just program all of this and it's not actually real. All the feelings and anxiety and everything, all of that is just like fake. In an even bleaker scenario than the one. I mean, how do they know that the world they're in is not the Matrix? Inside their home base. He explains you know? that after losing control of artificial everything feels just like a video game nowadays. A winter, believing that a lack of energy from the sun will eliminate the machines. After the nukes, the world became a wasteland run entirely by machines, while humanity was trapped in a dream world. This dream world is the Matrix, a simulation of humanity's golden age. It is all encompassing and never stops for the people inside it, where they live their whole lives believing that the Matrix is real. And if this wasn't heavy enough, Morpheus then springs it onto Neo that he believes that Neo is the reincarnation of a man with the power to change anything in the Matrix. He is the one. Initially not taking things very well, Neo panics at his newfound enlightenment. He's realizing that the entire world around him, all his friends, memories, icons, dreams are all I mean, bro, if I if I minority. realized that shit, it's I would be panicking the also. Was a warning. A warning about the path modernity is taking us, where technology has infested every aspect of daily life. But but it's not really that crazy because it's a computer program which has a lot of people in it. So it's not it's not like the your friends are still your friends. They're just probably hooked into the matrix, and they're getting programmed certain philosophies, ideologies. Uh, but it's still your friends. I mean, like I think the people exist but I'm not really sure. Life, to a point that we've attached our own psyches into the hands of a few. You see, in our age of overconsumption and mass production, the powerful must maintain constant relevance through mm. advertising and media. By doing this, multinationals always assure continuous demand to drive continuous profits. Instead of just manufacturing a particular product, companies need to manufacture the structure, the personality, the culture Jesus. of the universal public. And big tech serves as the perfect vessel I feel like just this. moving Every out into the life, forest, to be tech honest. Big delivers you into an alternative reality, playing on your emotions, depression, fear, anxiety, hunger, lust, laughter, acting directly on your sensorium. The content you are constantly watching every hour of every day of every year is not a vision but a manufactured data stream that can be Jesus to Christ. cultural values that generate immense wealth. Little do we Sensorium. realize that every day we are chipping away our autonomy to an all-pervasive drug that delivers whatever message those dealing the drug wish it to be, providing a fertile ground for fostering technocracy. Which is why in the Matrix movie, this is symbolized by AI using human consciousness to fuel their ever-expanding empire. Neo realizes the challenge he is up against. He has to mentally and physically overcome the entire system he lived in to find true meaning, to save the entire human population. However, Neo's fears soon start to dissipate once he begins practicing and learning the inner workings of the matrix back inside the program morpheus introduces neo to a combat simulation inside mm -hmm. the dojo this is a sparring program man that shirt is similar so to the program reality of dirty the matrix. it has the same basic rules rules like gravity what you must learn is that these rules ah, are no different than the rules of this a my favorite system. part some of them can be bent others i know kung fu broken Using a computer algorithm, Neo is able to completely understand the intricacies of Kung Fu, despite having never done so before. So Neo and Morpheus begin fighting. At the start, Morpheus is dominating. He seems unstoppable, he's flying across the room. And so when Morpheus asks why Neo lost, Neo explains that so Morpheus is just too fast. But I he counters this bullets. by saying that the fighting ability has nothing to do with their muscles, ready, cluing Neo in. Be. Morpheus implies that Neo doesn't even need to breathe in air mm. when inside the Matrix. So upon hearing this, Neo is able to overtake Morpheus during the second fight. He understands 
understands that the whole game is mental. If he can overcome the mental barriers inside of his mind, he can win anything. And by doing this, he stuns the whole crew watching the ordeal. This is all part of the trials and tribulations that Campbell identified in the hero's journey. It's the mental game that serves as the greatest barrier to success. This is the step that Campbell describes as the training and tribulations in his work. This step happens once the hero has entered into the unknown and serves as their introduction into the new yeah. world. For Neo, this is quite literal. The skills he will need are taught to him after he first exits the Matrix and goes back inside to train with Morpheus. Neo's teachings also bring Neo closer to the truth. The more he learns about the real world and the Matrix that he lived in, the more he experiences both of them and the further he is pushed towards the truth. Afterwards, Morpheus introduces Neo to another program inside the Matrix, one that holds everything that is expected in a real city, ranging from buildings to cars and simulated people. Morpheus explains that the Matrix is their enemy, but most people are not ready to be unplugged from it, as they are too dependent on the system. While listening, Neo's eyes are caught by a striking woman in a red dress. When she gets behind Neo, the woman suddenly changes into an agent, pointing a gun at him. Morpheus then reveals that these agents are in fact sentient computer programs, fully capable of manipulating the Matrix at will. It turns out that everyone who has fought one of these agents was killed, but Morpheus, believing that Neo is the one, states that the agents will never be as strong or as fast. I don't even fast. know what would happen if they got unplugged. This scene is one of the best. ...into an agent, pointing a gun at him. Morpheus then reveals that these agents are in fact sentient computer Bam. programs, fully capable of manipulating the Matrix at will. It turns out that everyone who has fought one of these agents was killed, but Morpheus, believing that Neo is the one, states that the agents will never be as strong or as fast as he can be. This dream world of the Matrix is a reflection towards fears of consumerism. You see, all these films in the late 90s were particularly concerned with this, as they saw their society become more and more focused on products and commodities. But nowadays, these fears are even more prevalent. The vessel of big tech dominates everyday life in a way that we've never seen before, where human values have been chopped up and commodified for a profit, where our opinions, our values, our culture, our thoughts are all controlled by technology that has saturated everything. And the numbers show that this is increasingly leading us towards nihilism. Just look around you. The atomization, the loneliness, the depression, the anxiousness. Just as Neo's life in the Matrix made him- That's how I feel like, fuck it. To be honest, I'm going to try to do this shit and if, it, if I fail, I fail. If I succeed, I succeed, but I'm not going to sit and just wait for better days. That's the crazy, like watching this thing, that's a crazy part, you know, like sometimes I wake up and I'm tired and I'm just like, bro, I don't want to film a video today, but I got to go. I got to, you know, I got to push it, you know, because there's a better life out there. There is there's something better. Like it, it can't all be like this, you know? Nihilistic. To find meaning, we must continue our own journey. And the nature of the Matrix shout out to the Moon. resemblance to the concept of Honestly, shout habitants. out to this guy. The this guy makes the best that tells videos us that from a right now on YouTube. Age, social convention and rules that people follow are imprinted onto your personality. These conventions aren't just habitual, but instead influence people's ways of thinking and how they see the world. And once you become part of the habitus, your actions perpetuate the cycle for other people. Jesus. The can be viewed much like the rules of a game. Seemingly illogical things are taken for granted and enshrined as rules. If you didn't know the rules of golf, for example, the sport would just look ridiculous. Why not just pick up the ball and put mm. it in the hole? But knowing the rules of golf means that you see this in an entirely mm. different way. Of course, the rules of golf exist for a reason, otherwise it wouldn't be an actual game. But the Habitus has no real purpose <laughs> by itself. It exists as a manifestation that's, that's of the true, environment actually. you grew up in. So then who controls the habitus. rules and conventions that easily influence our thoughts? When you start to ask this question about your own life, you then start to see that once you break free of the constraints placed on you, that you can finally see the world as it truly is. And the Matrix is the allegory for this. It exists as a presence so question. entirely, dictating what you see, what you value, and what actions you take. But none of this is actually real. Once these conventions, once these values, once these rules are tainted too much, the cracks start to show. And in the Matrix, the cracks- And a beautiful allegory it is. Show when Neo breaks free. This is Neo's journey. Jesus, all of this is just falsehood. going, it's man. It's only through his self-improvement and search for the truth that he can finally find meaning. It's during the time of Neo's training in the Matrix that we're introduced to the character of Cypher. From the very first conversation, Cypher complains that he should have just taken that blue pill and begins questioning the credibility of Neo's journey altogether. We then transition to the reveal of Cypher's endgame while he's dining in a restaurant mm. inside of the Matrix, being joined by Agent That's Smith. Judas right Willing to sell out his whole crew, Cypher requests to be put back mm. inside the Matrix. Of course, not without benefits. In return, he wants to be a rich, famous actor who doesn't remember anything about the real world. Here, Cypher's entire character is summarized as he states the 
line, ignorance is bliss. Meanwhile, Neo, Morpheus, and some other members of the crew enter the Matrix to meet an important figure called the Oracle. Upon arrival, Neo sees a group of children who are all doing seemingly impossible things. A few are manipulating objects like bubbles and blocks using their minds, and one child even manages to bend a spoon right in front of Neo. Neo takes an interest in the child, who explains that trying to bend the spoon is impossible. One has to realize that there is no spoon. They have to use their mind to overcome impossible obstacles. Once Neo hears this, he looks at the spoon and is able to easily bend There is no right, spoon. Just before he's quickly called off to see the Oracle. This spoon bending scene is important, as it establishes the way out of the Matrix. As you start to realize that everything in your life is determined by your mindset, your life really begins to change. And the change of mindset isn't only an internal change, but also an external one. The way you see the world actually changes it around you. In an abstract sense, we all create our own realities through our experiences. The world is only made up of the data that our senses give us, and it's up to us to fill in the rest. In the movie, this is made literal. The Guys, you gotta get free, man. You gotta get free. I don't know who's sitting there or who's listening to this, but you guys gotta try to get free. You have to try. You can't just be following everybody else. Because he knows and accepts the Being truth, a follower is not a good thing. Of the Matrix. And in doing so, this puts him forward on his hero's journey. But because Neo hasn't fully accepted his journey, or fully understood the fact that he is the chosen one, the Oracle doesn't have good news for him, as she states that he really isn't the one. And once Neo yeah. is down receiving this bad news, Neo then gets a case of deja vu. The hero's the journey. Cat repeats its movements. As soon as he says this, this indicates to the crew that there has been a glitch in the Matrix. It turns out that this whole visit was just a trap set up with the help of Cypher, and things start to go downhill from here, as Morpheus is then caught by Agent Smith, Day, and the rest of the group flees to a nearby garage. As it's revealed that Cypher has backstabbed all of them, he then goes on to kill many of his crew, but is stopped right before he can kill the chosen one, Neo. This too is part of the hero's journey. Campbell shows that one of the key steps in your hero's journey is facing someone- If you just think of the, the, the way they've built this one, just like the structure, the structure to this movie is it's next to perfect. One who wants to bring you back to where you started. And in the Matrix, Cypher represents this. He's the guys you know who want to bring you down. He's the other crab in the bucket. People don't want you to succeed. They don't want you to escape the Matrix surrounding you. Because if you do, it shines a bad light on them. They know their flaws. They know their mindset is weak. Cypher's failed sabotage demonstrates the futility of the desire to go back to ignorance. And this is true for both our reality and the Matrix. Once the truth is uncovered, there's no going back. Which brings us on to one of the most interesting scenes in the movie, a dialogue between Morpheus and Agent Smith. Two equals and opposite sides of an extensive conflict between man and AI. Smith equates humanity to a virus, one that spreads exponentially while devouring all the resources in their way. And from the perspective of a machine, he isn't entirely wrong. Smith then clears his subordinates from the room and further levels with Morpheus. It turns out Smith hates the Matrix just as much as Morpheus, yet for very different reasons. Smith views himself say maybe as we above. Have Agent Smith represents the elite. He's the one who creates not the even Matrix. Ten years. He hates I don't the people know. inside of it. The people inside of it are the only ones feeding his life force. Then it's all he can't over. help but despise these people. These people who live in blissful ignorance mm. of the horrible world around exactly. them. They have no idea what the truth is. They don't know the darkness of the real world. And by accessing the secrets that Morpheus holds, this will allow Agent Smith to completely destroy the last remaining bastion of humanity in the outside world, a place called Zion. Before Smith can extract this information, Nero and Trinity storm the building with multiple firearms, rescuing Morpheus in the process. The trio make their escape through a phone booth. Bruh, I'm telling you guys, whatever you're doing, just do something. It's very important that you're just doing something. Don't sit and wait, wait for life. Just do something. Every day, wake up, just do something. You can train, you can... Because if you just wait for it, it's never gonna happen. As Morpheus exits the Matrix along with Trinity, but not before witnessing Agent Smith at the last second, leaving him alone with Neo. The two begin fighting, but Neo isn't able to keep up with Smith, and is eventually shot dead. Back on the ship with Morpheus and Trinity, they watch Neo as all of this happened. The guy which goes to the gym every day, is always going to beat the guy which doesn't. Devastated, Trinity whispers into Neo's ear that she would fall in love with a dead man and that he is the one. As she kisses Neo, he is thunderously resurrected, almost in a biblical sense. This scene again is just another phase of the hero's journey, the point of deepest despair. It seems like all is lost as Neo lies unconscious, but when Neo makes the choice to save Morpheus, he begins the final steps towards his journey. His death and rebirth are literal, but they're also metaphorical. Mr. Anderson, the person with no purpose, the person who's nihilistic, the person who's self-hating 
self wallowing. Living an atomized, transient, lonely life in a dystopian megacity is gone. However, Neo is born. This sequence and what follows next is the conclusion of Neo's journey, where he faces his harshest challenge yet as he journeys into the government building to rescue Morpheus. In doing so, he becomes the one. He conquers his mind, and by doing so, Neo fulfills his hero's journey. He finally finds meaning in life. Neo defeats the nihilism surrounding him by accepting the truth around the world. And from Neo's perspective, everything around him is now computer code. He effortlessly flies into Agent Smith, obliterating him and causing his colleagues to run away. Once all said and done, Neo exits the Matrix and detonates an EMP, securing the safety of his operation space back in the real world. The film then ends with Neo talking on a payphone, speaking directly to the audience. Neo sends a warning that he is going to expose the truth of what's really out there, and he proceeds to fly straight up in the sky as the film cuts to black. This end scene is an allegory of escaping nihilism. Through rejecting our fractured habitus and the false values of the virtual world, one can find meaning in reality. Among many, Romantic. these consumerist forces we find today are distractions that drive people away from the truth. For the self-improvement and your own hero's journey, it's possible to escape the clutches of your own matrix. In the film, the bullets that would have killed Neo before simply stop in mid-air. In the same way, the things that seem like problems in the virtual world cease to matter when you stop focusing on them and pay attention to the real ones. This whole end scene is supposed to highlight the true power of overcoming our own mind, our own self-destructive thoughts, and our own self-limiting beliefs. By defeating his anxieties, Neo could defeat anything. It was only once he conquered himself that he could find transcendental meaning and overcome the impossible. Which is what this film is trying to show us, that when you realize that you have full control of your behavior, addictions, anxieties, relationships, health, and destiny, can you start to wake up from the delusion you've been living in? This is the only way of breaking through the matrix that has enslaved your life. True. And that's where we end this reaction. Uh, one of the greatest YouTubers, I would say, right now. I think his uh, videos are very insightful. And uh, no, I think he's right. I think uh, one should strive to be better and try to get out of the matrix. So, like, comment, and share if you like videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.